It's the gospel truth. It's the word of the Lord. Inspired by the Holy Spirit. It's a two-way sword. It's a roadmap to heaven. And it's heaven's good news. Thank God for the Bible. It's the gospel truth. It's time for the Gospel Truth with Dr. Scott Thomas of Temple, Georgia. For more information about the ministry and the music of Brother Scott, go each week to www.scottthomasministries.com. That's www.scottthomasministries.com. You can get more messages and music at the website, so be sure to go to www.scottthomasministries.com once every week. And now, here is Dr. Scott Thomas and the Gospel Truth. Isn't it good to be in the Lord's house? Yes. Isn't it good to be in His presence? Yes. And to feel His Spirit? Yes. Amen. Yes. Amen. <laughs> I'm glad I'm saved this morning. I'm glad we still go to the church where we can shout. Amen. Praise the Lord and feel His presence and God moves and God blesses. Let's turn to Psalms 37, 1 through 8. Psalms chapter 37, verse 1 through 8 this morning. Preaching on this peace without Pills. Peace without pills. Appreciate Tessa's testimony. It really set up the message. Stand with me and we'll read together in Psalms 37, verses 1 through 8. It's a Psalm of David, verse 1. Fret not thyself because of evildoers, neither be thou envious against the workers of iniquity, for they shall soon be cut down like the grass and wither as the green herb. Trust in the Lord and do good, so that so shalt thou dwell in the land, and verily thou shalt be fed. Delight thyself also in the Lord, and He shall give thee the desires of thine heart. Commit thy way unto the Lord, trust also in Him, and He shall bring it to pass. And He shall bring forth thy righteousness as the light, and thy judgment as the noonday. Rest in the Lord. Wait patiently for Him. Fret not thyself because of Him who prospereth in His way, because of the man who bringeth wicked devices to pass. Cease from anger. And forsake wrath, fret not thyself in any wise to do evil. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for this opportunity to be in your house and for your sweet presence. Help me, Lord, to preach in spirit and in truth, and we'll give you the praise for it all. In Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated. I want to give you a few statistics this morning to set up the message, if I can. You know, there's 40 million. 40 million people just in the U.S. will experience an impairment because of an anxiety condition this year. Those who experience anxiety and stress are highly likely to become drug users and addicts. 43% of North Americans take mood-altering prescriptions regularly. Paxil and Zoloft, anxiety uh, medications, totaled almost $5 billion in sales 12 years ago in 2002. I wonder what it would be today. 42% of young adults in America regularly use recreational drugs or illegal drugs and alcohol to cope with anxiety. 
Those that have anxiety conditions, listen to the symptoms and the things that go on with them. They often feel out of control in their health, with their health and life. Often struggle with low self-esteem. Have difficulty managing pressure. Feel returned love is performance-based. And that is totally false. They are often workaholics or often sick often have unhealthy relationships, visit the doctor more often, are overall more unhappy, experience erratic emotional behaviors, often are quick to get angry, regularly feel unsettled, regularly feel overwhelmed, feel discontented or detached from reality and from life. They often feel they are just on the edge of losing control, because inward focus and, and they dwell on their personal problems may jump from relationship to relationship in search of perfection. They may jump from job to job because of higher levels of stress. They feel life is just passing them by, question their faith, and question God's presence in their lives. And they feel at a distance from God because of anxiety. What I'm trying to tell you this morning is there are 40 million people in the U.S. alone that, it, that experience this anxiety and all they're looking for is peace for their life. That's what they're looking for. You may be one of them. Now, I want to put up a disclaimer here. I'm not telling anybody, first of all, that prescription drugs is a bad thing. When I had back problems, when I had kidney uh, stones and things like that, I took prescription drugs searching for a temporary peace from the pain. And I believe in them. <laughs> but let me tell you this, those that get hooked on prescription drugs, once you realize you're hooked on it and you start seeking after it, then it becomes a sin. Yeah, right. Amen? And there are people who are hooked on drugs and looking for drugs and needing drugs just in search for peace. But I've got good news for you this morning. The Lord died on the cross at Calvary so you could have peace without any fears. Amen. 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 There's peace in Christ. He gives us peace that's real in our hearts. He gives peace that's real in our heads. Peace that's real in our heaven. Amen. Hey, I'm going to a land where there's peace forevermore. Amen. And guess what? I won't have to take a pill in order to get it. Amen. Amen. There's peace in our circles when we get the peace of Christ. There's peace with our relationships. There's peace with our relatives. There's peace with our reunions when we accept Christ and get Christ in our lives and everybody around us gets Christ in their lives. There can be peace without peace. There's peace in our circumstances. And to have peace in your circumstances, first you got to look above. That is to, you got to find God. Uh, and you will find God if you'll look above and look for God. And then you got to look around. Amen. Uh, when you have peace in your heart and you have the peace of God in your life, you look above and you find God. And you look around and you find grace. You find out you're blessed. Hey, we can look around this morning and see how God's presence has been here already this morning. And friend, that's blessings beyond all understanding. Look around, you'll find grace. And then look ahead and you'll find glory land. Amen. He gives peace without us taking appeal. 
Now I'm telling you, I know folks, they real, I realize they need anxiety medicines. I understand that. And I'm not telling you not to take them, but I'm also telling you there's another prescription that Jesus can give. He is the great physician, and he'll prescribe a peace to you, and you'll never have to take a pill. It'll not cost you anything with the pharmacist or with him in any way. Hey, he'll take you in. He'll diagnose your case he'll prescribe this peace to you and he will not charge you or your insurance for it amen I'm telling you you can have peace without taking pills amen. so let's look at the steps if we can on how to have peace without pills to have peace without pills first of all you got to control your walk how you walk with the Lord. Jeremiah 6.16 6, says, Thus saith the Lord, Stand ye in the ways and see and ask for the old paths. Where is the good way? And walk therein. Control your walk. Walk in those paths. And ye shall find what? Rest for your souls. That's peace. He said, if you just seek out those old paths and walk in them, amen, and find that good way and walk in it, you'll have rest for your soul. You can have peace. But you know what that crowd said? It's in the same verse. But they said, we will not walk therein. That's the problem with all these folks, so many of folks that are on anxiety pills, they decided not to walk in the old paths of the Lord or to walk with the Lord or, or to walk in the way of good in the Lord. And therefore, there's no peace in their lives. Amen. Notice the command in, in the verses that we read this morning in verse 3. Trust in the Lord. That means have faith in God. Put your trust in God. In other words, you need to track God, study His steps, and then trust God by staying in His steps. Track Him. Hey, what do you mean track Him? Hey, find out where God is and stick with Him. And everywhere He goes, that's where you need to go. Tessa and I was watching an old movie last night. You may remember it. Uh, follow me, boys. And at the end of the movie, he says, follow me, boys, and walks across the bridge and they're following. Hey, that's what God is saying. Follow me. Follow me. Just go where I go. When you don't know what else to do, just follow me. As a matter of fact, they sung a little song and said, when you don't know what else to do, just follow me, boys. Hey, that's what God's saying. Follow me. When you don't know what else to do. Hey, don't go to a psychiatrist and a psychologist and, and the doctors and all that and get all hooked on all these anxiety pills. I've got a peace for you. If you'll just follow me. Control your walk. Have faith in God. And then have faithfulness in goodness. In other words, do good. Is that what, what he said in verse 3? And do good. Live in holiness. That's how you do good. Live in honesty. That's how you do good. Have faithfulness and goodness. And that's the command. Now that's what He tells us to do, but then there's the comfort. What will happen if we do these things? Psalms 37 verse 25. And it says, I have been young and now am old, yet... Have I not seen the righteous forsaken nor his seed begging bread? Amen. That's what David had said. He said, I, I was young, now I'm old, and I've never seen the children of God begging for bread. Ain't that good? Friend, I'm telling you, there is a peace in knowing you will never be forsaken if you'll simply live to please Jesus. Amen. If you live, live to praise Jesus. And if you will stay in this walk and stay in this way, you can have that peace.
peace and you can have the peace of knowing what David said is true. Once you are old, you can know that you never, 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 never was in want for anything. You never beg for bread. Hey, I've been in some tight spots. I've seen some places in my life where I, where I slept for money, but I've never, never, never had to beg for bread in any way. Thank you, Lord. Ain't he good? You can have peace without pills if you'll just watch where you walk. Second of all, number two, condition, condition your will. Notice the command, Psalms 37, 4a, delight thyself also in the Lord. That's the command. Delight thyself in the Lord. That means in dark times, delight thyself in the Lord. In defeated times, in desperate times, in dynamic times, delight thyself in the Lord. No matter what's going on, just rejoice in the Lord. No matter how dark, defeated, desperate, dynamic times may get, if you'll delight yourself in the Lord, you can have peace without pills. Amen. That's the command to delight ourselves in the Lord. The comfort is if we do that, is in Psalms 37, 4b. He shall give thee the desires of thine heart. How can you get the desires of your heart and have peace? Oh, maybe you're asking this one preacher, how can I have peace in my heart? How can I have it? How, I, I, how can I get the desires of my heart? Well, you've got to lose your will. What you want and accept His will. Amen. Lose your will and your wants and accept His Word. Accept His ways. Accept His worship. When you condition your will, that's the second point, condition your will. I'm going to make my will His will. Whatever your will is, Lord, that's what I want. Amen. And when you condition your will, you can have peace. Peace not given through medications, but peace that is given through the Messiah. Yes. Amen. Condition your will. Condition your will. Control your walk. And number three, commit your way. Look at Psalms 37 and verse 5. Is that not what he says? Commit thy way unto the Lord. Trust also in Him and He shall bring it to pass. Once again, there's a command here. Give God your commitment. Commit thy way unto the Lord. That word commit means to roll on to. You ever heard Peg McCamey sing that song? Just roll that burden on me. Roll that burden on me. Yeah. You ever see her sing? She take that hanky and go round and round. Roll that burden on me. Uh -huh. Amen. That's what it's saying here in this commit. Commit thy way unto the Lord. Roll that burden. Roll it on to Him. Amen. Roll it on to the way unto uh, the Lord. Roll on to God your hardships. Roll on to God your hindrances. Roll on to God your heartaches. Hey, He didn't say pressures wouldn't come, but He said, I will give you peace. Amen. And when the pressures come and when everything's closing in on you, just roll them off on to God. Commit thy way unto the Lord. Roll the hardships, the heartaches, the hindrances on to Him. And friend, I'm telling you, when you give God your commitment, He will give you peace. Give God your commitment. Give God your confidence. Psalms 37, 5 b Trust also in Him. That's giving God your confidence. I wonder how many really have confidence in the Lord. You know, it shows up when you get under pressure and you get under anxiety and stress and stuff. It shows up if you really put your trust in Him. Really got confidence in Him. Commit your confidence to the Lord. And this is how you do it. By trusting Him with your failures. You're going to fail. Say, Lord, I failed. But I'm going to trust You with it. Commit to the Lord your confidence by trusting Him with your fortunes. 
the things you have, that your finances and things, and your faith and your future. The command is to give God your commitment, give God your confidence. And the comfort in that is if we'll do those two things, Psalms 37, 5 C, and He shall bring it to pass. Amen? Amen. So you say, wait a minute, preacher. What, what is it He's going to bring to pass? Well, look back at verse 3 and 4. Trust in the Lord and do good, so shalt thou dwell in the land, and verily thou shalt be fed. Verse 4, delight thyself also in the Lord, and he shall give thee the desires of thy heart. There's three things there. The dwell in the land, be fed, and the desires of your heart. Let me put it to you this way. The place of your destiny will be brought to pass. That's the land he's going to give you. That's what he said he'd do. Trust in the Lord, do good. So shalt thou dwell in the land. In heaven. Your destiny will be brought to pass. Amen. Amen. When you commit your way to the Lord, your dwellings will be brought to pass. That's where you'll dwell in heaven. Hey, do you want to go to heaven? Do you want to go there? Do you want to be there? Then commit thy way to the Lord. Get saved and stay in the way yes. of the Lord. Your delight will be brought to pass. That's in verse 4. That's what will be brought. Your desires will be brought to pass. The place of your darkness will be brought to pass. Those dark times, you're going to face them. But if you'll just keep committed to God, He'll take away those dark places. He'll get you out of those dark places. Amen? When you commit your way unto God, it will come to pass when you live in peace Amen. of God. And you can live in peace without the pills. Number four, calm your worry. Psalms 37 and 7. He said, rest in the Lord and wait patiently for Him. Fret not thyself because of Him who prospereth in His way, because of the man who bringeth wicked devices to pass. Now, there's a charge here. The charge. Rest in the Lord. Number one, be silent. That word rest in the Lord here means to be silent. When you look up the original Greek, it means to be silent. And we are to be silent. Amen? And then the charge is to be still. Wait patiently for Him. Stay peaceful and let God handle it. So be silent. Rest in the Lord. Be still. Wait patiently. And then be sane. Notice it says, fret not thyself. Fret not thyself means to be, if you're fretting, in this sense, right here in the Word of God, it means to be ablaze and to get hot. Boy, you ever get under stress and under anxiety and you get ablaze and you get hot about it? He's saying here, fret not. Amen. Don't get ablaze. Don't get hot. Instead, keep sane and peaceful and calm and still. Amen. And God will take care of it in His time and in His way. Be still. Be still. Be silent. Be sane. That's the charge. Now here's the concern. God is telling us not to be concerned about those who, number one, prosper and succeed in worldly ways. And number two, provoke and sin in wicked ways. You know what some folks do? They get their eyes on the world and the things out there. And all of a sudden, they, they're, they're looking and say, well, how, how come they got so good? And seems like they don't have any problems. They make it just fine. And, and they prosper and they succeed. And yet they live well. And here I am doing all my can for God and committing my way. And I don't prosper and I don't uh, succeed. And, and they provoke and, and they sin in, in wicked ways. And seems like they're doing just fine. But I'm trying to live right and everything's coming down on me. Friend, let me tell you something. The Lord said, just stay with me. 
Follow me and keep with me and I will give you peace. Because there is a closure to this thing. I know sometimes it looks like the world's prospering, the world's doing so much better, and they don't have a care in the world and, and all those things. But friend, there is a closure in Psalms 37 and verse 2. He said, For they shall soon be cut down like the grass and wither as the green herb. In other words, the wicked will not prosper. The wicked will not prevail. They will not prosper. They will not prevail. You say, how do you know they won't prevail? Because God said here, for they shall soon be cut down like the grass. In other words, they will be whacked appropriately. appropriately. Amen. They will be whacked appropriately. They will be cut down. And they will be withering away. That's what he said and wither as the green herb. Don't get your eyes on this world and the people of this world and the wicked of this world and say, hey, they got it so much better. They don't. They don't. I promise you, they live in hell every day. They live with, with anxiety. They, they're the ones that, that are seeking for peace. And they seek it in all the wrong place. The reason they are so wicked is because they're looking for that peace and they're looking in the wrong places. Amen. Calm your worries. Be silent. Be still. And be sane. Practice these things. Quit the drama. You ever want to tell somebody just quit all the drama? Just quit all the drama. Quit getting all upset and, and a tizzy about everything. And, and, and trust God. Amen. Be still. Be silent. Be sane. And have peace without the pills. And by the way, this is a peace that passes all understanding. Amen. It's a peace the world cannot provide. It's a peace that the pills cannot provide. Finally, not only calm your worries, but conquer your wrath. Taking this verse by verse, if you hadn't noticed, Psalms 37, verse 8. He said, Cease from anger and forsake wrath. Fret not thyself in any wise to do evil. I want you to notice, first of all, the cranky. You ever seen any cranky people? Boy, I sure have. There ain't nothing right with those folks. They cranky all the time. Amen. Seven dwarfs, they call them grumpy. <laughs> they call them cranky, the cranky. Cease and forsake being angry and cranky. That's what he's saying. Cease from anger and forsake wrath. So you got to cease and forsake being angry and cranky with people in your circles and problems in your circumstances. You ever seen folks like that? Everybody that gets around them, they find a problem with them. They're cranky. They get angry with folks easily. They don't like people. They don't want people around them. And boy, they always find a problem with somebody. But somehow, some way, they're going to get all upset with them. And, they, and if they can't find something, they're going to hunt something. And if they can't do nothing better than that, they'll just make up something if they can. Amen. Cranky, cranky, cranky. Let me complain about this. Let me complain about that. Let me I pitch a fit about this. I got a problem with this person. I got a problem with that person. Friend, I'm telling you, if you got a problem with everybody else, you've got a problem on the inside. Amen. There's something wrong on the inside. Amen. Amen. Get cranky and angry and, uh, and full of wrath over people in your circles. And then they get cranky and angry and full of wrath over the problems in their circumstances. Oh, they got this problem and they got that problem. I, I mentioned it this week in the email. Some of y'all noticed that uh, uh, last Sunday we got home and, or started home and Tessa said, hey, drop me off the house. And, and I went over to Temple to get us something to eat and all of a sudden as I was going through the intersection, my alternator went out. Was able to coast into the, the, the parking lot there. Oh, I could have got all 
angry and upset and my goodness, nothing ain't ever going right. Why did this have to happen to me? You know, get all cranky and angry and full of wrath over the problem in my circumstance. But you know what? I just kind of laughed and I said, thank you, Lord, that you took care of us. Say, so how did he take care of you? Well, first of all, the thing didn't stop right in the middle of the intersection for somebody to come along and hit me. Another thing was I was able to just coast right on into a parking space. I, I didn't have to get out. I didn't have to push. I had both boys with me. I didn't have to get any help in that way. The Lord blessed in the fact that He, he uh, put it upon Tessa's heart to go home first and so she was able to come and get us. We didn't even sit there long enough. Five minutes from that, didn't even sit there long enough to even get hot. Well, it caused air conditioner with not Oh. I mean, hey, don't get cranky about your circumstances. Realize the blessings. Look on the positive. And then they get cranky and angry, not only at people in the circles and problems in the circles, but procedures in their church. Oh boy. Well, I don't like the way that preacher did that, and I don't like the way that deacon did this, and I don't like the way that did this, and that did that. Friend, I'm telling you right there, folks have got a problem all the time, have got a real problem. But it ain't everybody else that's got the problem. They're the ones that's got a problem. Amen. Oh, they got a problem with every procedure in the church. And if this ain't done this way and that way and so forth. And hey, I'm not against doing things in a fashion and orderly way as the Bible says. But hey, we don't have to complain about everything. Amen. The Bible says stop that if you want peace without peace. If you want peace in your life without pills, stop being cranky with everything and everybody. Amen. And then we see the conclusion. If you keep being angry and cranky pretty soon, you will hate everything, you'll hurt everybody, and you'll harvest evil. Notice what he said here. Fret not thyself in any wise to do evil. You see, people who live like that have no peace in, 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 in their heart. And, and, and they are angry and upset all the time. And they, pretty soon they hate everybody. They hurt everybody. Hey, you keep acting that way, you're going to hurt somebody. And you do. People will. Pretty soon you'll harvest evil. That's the real danger. Amen. People who live like that have no peace in their hearts and no matter how many pills they take, they'll never have peace. Amen. You have to conquer your wrath if you want peace without pills. Conquer your wrath. I'm closing. I'm going to come with a song this morning. There is a worldly nerve calming peace that comes from Paxil and Zoloft, other drugs, alcohol and all, but it only lasts for a season. It's temporary. The drug wears off. But there is a peace. There is a peace this morning that can be attained without taking pills, without taking pot, without taking potions, and without taking poison. There is a peace. And it does pass all understanding. This peace comes when we decide we're going to trust Jesus and control our walk and condition our will, commit our way, calm our worry, and conquer our wrath. God is calling us to be involved in the process of having peace in our lives. Did you notice what I just said? That does not mean you just say, hey Lord, give me peace. And then just go about doing anything you want. Amen. What I'm telling you, you've got to take some steps. I've given you the steps. Control your walk. Condition your will. Commit your way. Calm your worry. Conquer your wrath. Be involved in 
the process if you want peace in your life. We cannot control what happens in our lives or when things happen in our lives, but we certainly can control how we respond to the things that happen in our lives. Do you need this peace that goes beyond all understanding? Do you need this peace that Jesus offers without taking a pill in order to have it? Do you need it today? God has it. God has it. You've been listening to The Gospel Truth with Dr. Scott Thomas of Temple, Georgia. To order this message or to contact Brother Scott, go to www.scottthomasministries.com. That's www.scottthomasministries.com. Be sure to come back next week for more Bible preaching and the gospel truth. Yes, I love my 